It's homework time. Yes. Here we go again. All right. Well, let's start off in the right way. Let's jot our name down at the top of the paper. I'll put my name. You put yours. And then we'll write today's date. I'll write today. You write the actual date where and when you are. Solve. That's our instructions here. And you start, you see, they started the first one for us here. But we just take these mixed numbers, decompose them, add the whole numbers, add the fractions, put it all together. Beautiful, like making cake. So two and one third, we can think of as two and one third. There you go. And one and two third, we're adding to it. So we can think of that as one and two thirds. We put it together, look, two and one make three. One third and two thirds together are three thirds. And I'll even break this down to a further step for you. Hey, that's three plus, well, three thirds is equal to one, which, so of course, the grand total is four. And we look back, and yes, that answer makes sense. We can see three, four, okay, no problem. Um, same thing here. So we'll take this and say, hey, this is two and two fifths. And we're adding that to, yes, believe it or not, again, two and two fifths. So following their lead here, let's put the whole numbers together. Two and two make, yeah, four. Two fifths and two fifths, four fifths. And you know, uh, we can combine those steps. We don't have to write it out separately. Plus, it's four and four fifths. There we go. That's simple. I can't make it any more difficult. Sorry. If you're looking for hard, you ain't finding it here. All right. Now, this one, you see, I don't have, really have much room on the bottom. So my lines are going to have to be kind of short here. So, hey, but it's pretty obvious here. This is three and three eighths. And this is one and five eighths. I mean, I'm just rewriting the numbers here. It's kind of pointless even, you know, we could probably even do that step in our heads. But anyway, three plus one is, yeah, four, just like two plus two, look at that. Three eighths and five eighths is, so now here I'll do the, the plus. So that's eight eighths. This is the same as four plus eight eighths is one, right? So four and one together make five. There we go. That's it, moving on. Alrighty. For some reason, you freak us. You have us taking us a big step backwards here. We just did this without a number line, and now we're going to do it with a number line. Go figure. So again, our instructions are solved, but now we're to use a number line to show our work. So let's all sigh. <sighs> okay. So you see in this first one, they said two and one make three. Two fourths and three fourths is five fourths. Oh, okay. We got an improper fraction there. So we need to say, hey, that's four fourths and one fourth. And, and I'll even break it down for you so nobody gets lost. That's three, right? And the four fourths is equal to one. And then we have this one fourth. So, oh, fix that four. Okay. Even that's not so hot. There we go. That looks like a four. All right. So three and one make four. Four, and then we have this one fourth. So our final answer is one and one fourth. Which, well, looking back at what we're adding, makes perfect sense. So, uh, so what we're doing here, if we're going to start at two and two fourths, all right, and then we'll add one whole, which is going to take us from two and two fourths to three and two fourths, right? See, so that's plus one. And then we're going to go, and I do this slightly differently than you may have done it in class, but I want you to see, I'm breaking it down to smaller steps for you. So it's not like, oh, my teacher does it differently. Yes, I'm doing it differently to break it down for you. All right, so one, two, three-fourths, okay? So this is plus three-fourths. So there's our plus one and three-fourths. There it is, plus one, plus three-fourths. And where does that land us? Yes, right here at four and one-fourth. And this is like doing a check, okay? I know I griped about it, but, you know, it's like doing a check. So let's do the easy part first. Let's just look at the whole numbers. 3 plus 2 is 5. And then we have, that's what I mean by plus, and then we have 4, 6, and 5, 6 together make 9, 6. Good. And now when we think of 9, 6, we can pull out the one whole. And we've done so much of this, I'm really not doing a lot of splaining in here. All right, we pull out the one hole, the six, six, which from nine, six leaves. Good, three, six, you got the hang of this. All right, and so that will give us, and I'll break it down as I did up there, five, the six, six is one, and then we have the three, six, can't forget about that. 
So five and one make six, and then we have the three th six. Great. So let's draw a number line. Ha ha. Now, as you see in the one above, it's a good demonstration one because it goes from two to five. So we have to think about, you know, what's our smallest and then um, not even rounding up, but just hopping up largest value. Well, our smallest value, we have two and change. So we're going to go from two. Now, our largest value, of course, is going to be the sum, but we're going to have to go to seven, right? That's what I mean by hopping up. We can't just make it go to six because then where's the three six going? So there's seven at the other end. So we need to have three, four, five, and six in here. So we're putting three, four, five, six, four lines. And this is why I kind of griped about having to do the number lines because just drawing them is a bit of a pain in the bucket. There we go. So here's three, four, five, and six. But even still, we're not done drawing this number line because we need some six here. So we need, yeah, you know how you feel me. Bah! Now we have to draw five lines in between every one of these buggers. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and that will give us six there, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> And one, two, three, four, five. And lastly, one, two, three, and four, and five. Great. Yeah. So let's, uh, I, uh, let's start from our larger value, the three and four, six. I guess I didn't really need that two there, but whatever. All right, so here's three and four, six. That's where we could start from. So we'll add the two holes, which will take us up to five and four, six, right? Um, and one way to do this, and we've done this before, is to draw the, uh, the hop backwards. So find five and four, six, and draw it backwards so you don't end up in the wrong place. And then we need another five, six added on. So I'm going to bounce along there. One, two, three, four, and five, six. So this was plus two, and this is plus five, six. And where does that take us to? Six and one, two, three, six. So this is six and three, six. And sure enough, that's what we already knew. All right, let's do another one. All right, so now we have one and nine twelfths plus one and seven twelfths. Well, we know one and one make two. Golly. Nine twelfths and seven twelfths. Nine and seven are 16. Good. And we're talking about 12, Ed. So let's... uh decompose. So 12 twelfths will pull out the one hole and from the 16 twelfths that leaves you betcha four twelfths. Now so grand total will be two and I'm going to do this step that I was writing out in our heads now. Two and one make three and then we have four twelfths right? So we can learn how to envelop that steps that step there in the other ones. Okay now we need a number line. I'm going to see if I can squeeze it in down here so I have room for my beautiful facade over in the corner. All right. Now, uh, we're going to need to start from one, right? And just go up to four because, right? Okay, you see why? All right, good, good. All right, so one, we're starting from and we're going up to four. So we just need two and three in here. No prob, Bob. Uh, but what does become a prob for both Bob and us is that we're talking about twelfths. Bob, Bob, Bob. Okay. Um, so, golly, Bob, why are you doing? Why are you make me cry? All right. So, I mean, we have to draw eleven lines in here. There are other ways we can do it, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw eleven lines. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yowza! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And you see, I saw this coming. That's part of the reason I griped about having to do these. So 1 and 9 12s, I can gripe. That's 12, 11, 10, 
11, 10, 9. There it is. Okay, so there's 1 and 9 twelfths. So we're going to add 1 to that. So we have to find 2 and 9 twelfths. So here's 12 twelfths, 11, 10, 9. Okay. So this is our first hop is the one hole. I have to write it underneath here. That's plus 1. And then we're going another 7 twelfths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ha! Ah, so that's plus 7 twelfths. And sure enough, that takes us to 3 and 4 twelfths, right where we expected to be. Lovely. Let's go see what hazards number 3 hath wrought for us. Okay. Number 3. Solve. Use the arrow way to show how to make one. I actually like the arrow way, even though I joke about this, because this is how I think. So if we're adding two and three-fourths, I'd say, okay, well, two and one are three, right? And we have those three-fourths. And now I have this other three-fourths here. Well, look, if I kind of borrow one-fourth off of that, that'll get me to a nice clean four, and then there'll be another two-fourths. So it's going to give me that nice clean four, which we see right here in the arrow way. And then we have that other two-fourths. So our, obviously our sum total is four and two-fourths. Four and two-fourths. All right. So this, this is a really logical way of doing it. So look at this one. Let's just look at the whole numbers first. Uh, so two and three make five. And then I have this seven-eighths. And so I need to add to that the other fraction, the four-eighths. That's what we're doing here. So when I look at 7 eighths, I need how many more eighths to make a nice clean one whole? Right? From 7 eighths, I'm going to need one more eighth. So from my 4 eighths, that will leave 3 eighths. So what ends up happening here is, and now we're going to go to the arrow way. Um, I probably have room over here to squeeze it in, right? Um, so we're saying, hey, I got 5 and 7 eighths. I'm going to add to that. Oops, I was supposed to do it back on the other thing, wasn't I? No, 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 this is right, this is right. Okay, so I'm going to add to that one-eighth. I was doing it right for once. So I'm going to add to that one-eighth. That'll take me to that nice clean six. And then I have this three-eighths here, right? So three-eighths. So my grand total will be six and three-eighths. And you know you will quickly, I'm going to write that again here for my sum, um, you will quickly get to the point where this whole arrow way and this whole breaking it down are something that you do in your head and you don't even need to write it out. So basically we're writing out what your thought process will be. Let's look at the next one. So we have one and four make five and this has this seven ninths attached to it. So we still have this five ninths to add in there. Well, when I look at seven ninths, how many more ninths do I need to make nine ninths? Yepers, two. So I need another two ninths here. That'll give me nine ninths. And what does that leave from the five? Yes, indeed. Three ninths. All right. So again, going to the arrow away, um, I'm saying I'll just leave room here for that. I'm saying, hey, I got five and seven ninths. If I add to that two ninths, that'll take me to that nice clean six. And then I still have what here? Three ninths, right. So I have to add in that three ninths now bring me to six and three ninths. And that, of course, is my final sum, six and three ninths. All right, we are rounding the bend on Dunsville here. Let's go take a look at number four. Well, oh, the great Eureka gods have smiled upon us yet again. We get to use whatever method we prefer to solve here. And, of course, we like the simplest method. Number lines, pshaw. We eschew them. All right, so we're just going to add here. I mean, look at this. So let's take this. Let's add the whole numbers. One and one make two. Four-fifths and three-fifths. Four and three are seven. So that's seven-fifths. Okay, so we have a, an improper fraction we have to deal with there. So we know that five-fifths will give us the one whole, leaving from the seven-fifths another two-fifths. And so we know that we have two and one make three, and then we have two fifths. Simplest method here, right? And honestly, even this decomposition is something you'll get to be able to do in that step in your head. All right, so now let's do the same thing here. Three and one are four. 
Um, and then we have eight tenths and five tenths. Eight and five make, yes, 13. And we're talking about tenths. And so again, we're just gonna strip out the 10 tenths leaving from the 13 tenths. That's right, leaving three tenths. And so we can add like this. We have four and one make five, and then we have three tenths. I think this by far is the most simple, straightforward, and least error prone method. Drawing out twelfths on the number line, you're, you and I both are bound to make mistakes there eventually. All right, let's do this last one here. Two and three make five. Five sevenths and six sevenths. That's right, eleven sevenths. And we can bust out the seven sevenths, the one hole there. From the eleven sevenths, that leaves righto, four sevenths. And so five and one make six. And then we have this four sevenths. And I congratulate unto both thee and me. We are done with this homework time. So I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time. <music>